Hello and welcome back. Um, so I did a video about a week ago and it, it got some pretty good results and so I figure I'll give you another look at the Ender 3. Okay, so today we're just going to be talking about vase mode and basically you take a solid image, um, it can't be hollow, you take a solid image into your slicer and you print it in vase mode or slicer calls it something else I use uh, Cura and so then you come out with something like this so perfectly smooth all the way up beautiful water holds water perfect and so what it does is it prints three layers for the bottom and then it just prints up in one continuous stream all the way to the top and so that's what you get perfectly smooth boom very nice I printed three of these uh, a blue one a purple one or whatever color this is and uh, a neon green one and so they all turned out really nice the neon green is really hard to um, not see lines in it because you can see through it so the neon green one isn't the best but the this one and uh, the blue one was perfect and then I'm testing uh, these I got off Thingiverse these these the three that I did um, and then I'm printing right now one that I designed myself which I will show you guys and this one is basically goes up real thin and then goes back out to the same size of the base at the top so it looks kinda like an hourglass and see how fast it's printing the levels because it's just one continuous motion Okay, so let me tell you a few things to keep in mind. And I, the first <laughs> ten bases sucked, and um, I'll tell you how I fixed them. So first, your nozzle, bigger nozzle, faster, better. Um, so I would recommend what has been working the best is a um, a point five nozzle. And in your Cura settings, tell it, um, go to printer settings and say that it has a 1 nozzle, 1.0 nozzle. But then you do the line width at 0.5 because you can do the line width smaller than the nozzle. So you say, you tell Cura it's a 1 nozzle, you print the line width at a 0.5 and the actual physical nozzle is a 0.5 and so that's how you come out with this um, you do layer the uh, layer height at point two um, you can do bigger um, if you do a point four um, layer height with a point five nozzle um, I wouldn't go all the way to point five um, but if you do maybe a, a point three or point four um, you're getting you may have some problems if you go over 0.4 um, just because you want them you don't want to see lines you want it to be nice and smooth and not see any lines and so you don't want that gap between there right so but if you even with a 0.2 layer height with a um, 0.5 width this only took four hours the original design if you use the original settings like that they wanted you to then it would it would take upwards of 12 hours or more but if you do what I'm saying this came out in I think four hours and 38 minutes and I print three in a row just back to back and every single one came out good um, the only thing to take keep in mind is as a beginner to 3d printing um, 
and these being my first three successful vases, I, I did some little ones that were really successful. I'll show you. Remember, remember this one. So, but this is just too small. I tried to do this bigger, but I I didn't uh, use the settings that I used on this one, and so the bigger one failed miserably. Like you you just went like this, and and it fell apart. This one is sturdy, really sturdy. And I did the, I went to a 0.5 nozzle so that the width of the plastic is 0.5 all the way. That's sturdy. If you if you can get a 0.6 or a 0.8 nozzle, then even even better. A point a 0.8 would be perfect. I don't have one though. The the biggest I have is a 0.6. Um, I'm running only a 0.5. Now that it does not speed up the print, the bigger nozzles. All it does, it'll take the same amount of time. All it does is make it sturdy, more sturdy. Okay. Um, other than that, like this one's turning out. I hope it's right now. It's hitting that curve. So here's the this overhang is going to be the make it or break it point on that on the one that's printing so i'm hoping it turns out beautiful and then i want to do one in white um but these these are amazing and if you're using cura which you probably are if you're bought the under three um they have a setting in there where you put in the price that you paid for the filament um and generally uh so whatever you do and so Say you take a kilogram of pla you buy one kilogram for 20, 20 bucks, 19 bucks, 20 bucks, cheaper end plastic, um, PLA. Um, say you pay 20 bucks. That means for one kilogram, you can print nine of these. So say you sell these for, I don't know, eight to 10 bucks a piece. You can print nine with a kilogram, but you only print two and then you paid for the filament and then the other seven that you would have been able to print you can use that to print anything you want and so you're printing for free and um, so you only have to sell two out of the kilogram and so the first eight hours you get the plastic print out two of these in eight hours sell them on eBay whatever and boom you got you paid for your filament or you take one kilogram roll print out nine sell them all and then you have enough money to buy four kilograms of plastic that you can use to make anything you want that's just an idea like if you're I mean say you spend all your money and you got a printer and you're having trouble keeping up with all the filament that's how you would do it I also did today I just got in the mail a new white um, higher quality filament and um, wood filament I'm testing the wood out as soon as this well I might do the white one because I want a black and white base um, I might do the other half white the and then um, test out the wood later tonight um, depending on how late I stay up you know so I am test gonna test out the wood because it just it looks amazing um, but I'm re I really only bought the 3D printer for vases because um, I am doing little figurines. Um, I got little D and D figurines that I I'm testing, and it, it's got just amazing quality. Um, but this 0.2 nozzle don't go any higher than 0.2 nozzle. Um, you need it for the detail because you can see you can see the freaking buttons on his jacket and everything. And the the ribbon on the sword and 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 this is really small. Okay, so that's that about wraps it up. Um, I do. Let me let me pull up Cura. See if I missed anything. Yeah. So I already told you. Uh, layer height, point two. The wall line width, point five. Um, wall thickness doesn't even matter because you're you're only 
in base mode it only prints the point five. So, um, oh, this is another big thing. Okay, so a lot of expert, what I would consider expert, three D printer guys that I watch, they swear to to make something this big stick and and finish out nice you have to print with um what's it called um not a brim oh, shoot i can't hold on hold on um a raft so for something with this big of a base this big of a base you have to print with a raft that is a lie that is a straight up lie you just have to change the first between the first and second layer if you change between those it works um and lines never stick on the first layer but lines work on the second layer so what you do is go into cura um under under um shell top top and bottom pattern lines then right below that bottom pattern initial layer zigzag so what that does is, is it's gonna print zigzag first and then cut across it with lines for the second layer zigzag is what makes a raft stick that's why it sticks because you can't print in lines because then it won't stick on something this big so you print a zigzag so it's one continuous flow of plastic instead of a line which stops the flow and then starts back up. So you print a zigzag, first layer, then cut across it with lines, and since it's gonna be three layers, uh, did I tell you that? The top and bottom layers should be, with the 0.5 nozzle, it should be a 0.6 thickness, and you're doing 0.2 layers, so it's three layers of 0.2. So it's gonna do one line zigzag, two second layer lines third layer lines and then start printing the shell all the way up and th i literally i don't know if you can s you can you see how smooth this is it's i mean you can see through it because it's only 0 0.6 thick so you can see light but feel how s i can't feel it see how smooth it is it's it's perfect and every single first layer comes out perfect when I do that. Um, I also make the investment print on glass. Um, Ender 3 has that rough surface. It grips wonderful, yes. But it roughs your surface up when you get it off. If you print on glass, then take a glue stick and go tack, 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 and then just print on that. And you gotta clean the after like two, two or three prints. Just clean off the glue and put a new layer down. When it's hot, the bed's hot. Um, then just print again. And it, I literally since I switched the glass and glue over the Ender Three plate, uh, the quality of the bottoms. You can see this is smooth. This one I printed on the normal base and it's lines and it's really rough you, you want smooth right okay um, other than that here I'll t show you real quick before I get off um, the print that's going on it it made the it made the curve So you can see it, 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 it worked. So hopefully it, the, the top piece is the same size as the bottom, just going upward. So you can tell it's, it's going to, I think it's going to turn out really nice. And it's just checking away. This face that I'm printing now is um, 18 centimeters. Most of my vases are 20 centimeters. Um, the one I'm printing now is 18 centimeters. Um, and it only takes three hours. You can print print a base, start to finish, three hours, boom, 
there's 10 bucks or whatever five bucks if you sell them cheaper but as i was saying if you set up and cure how much plastic cost um it only costs like 90 uh 99 cents for this one the one that's printing is only 70 cents so it's possible so all right thank you guys for watching um i'm going to keep on printing um and remember this is a beginners i am a beginner and this is for beginners if you're like expert or if you haven't touched base mode and you want to try well then start you can you can start in base mode really quickly oh uh one more thing if you haven't found the right ender 3 settings um wall speed hold on i want to tell you real fast my speed settings because i know that that has been screwing me over um I am printing slow uh, outer wall speed is what it prints in um, in base mode it, it uses the outer wall speed because that's all it does is print the outer wall I am printing at 27.5 so that base that's printing is three hours long because I'm printing at 27.5 if I jump that up to the print speed which is normally 55 millimeters per second it would look like shit the fat but you would you would print a vase in an hour so keep that in mind you can print a vase in an hour and it looks like shit or you can drop the outer wall speed down to 27.5 and it will look amazing so uh, three hours for perfect one hour for shit so keep that in mind and 27.5 is the magic number for most of the Ender 3 printing. It is slower, but it produces amazing results. So, alright, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.